Yo, what's up you guys, it's Josh Tongle, and today I want to talk about something that a lot of people go through, especially when it comes to religion and as you continue to evolve on your journey and uh, possibly even challenge the status quo, and that is losing friends. Hmm. As many of you know, my wife and I, we actually lived in the Philippines for a couple of years, and then back in 2012, uh, we decided to move to America. Since we were newlyweds, I wanted her to see where I grew up back in Cali and LA and get to know my family and in, even get to meet some of my closest friends. But I'll never forget the conversation that I had the second day that I arrived back in the States. You know, so I call up an old friend, he picks up the phone. I'm like, yo, it's Josh. And he's like, Josh who? I'm like, Josh Tongle. He's like, Josh Tongle? He's like, I heard a lot of things about you. And in my mind, I was like, oh, hopefully good thing, you know? And then he said, you're banned at a lot of churches in LA. You're no longer my brother, and you're never gonna preach at the pulpit with me ever again. And I was like, oh dude, you could at least say hello, man. That's literally how the conversation started. You know, and then he said that there were people who were talking behind my back, and he was dropping some names that, you know, people who I was really close with. I mean, these are people who I lived with for a couple of years, did ministry, I went to school with. These are the friends who I could literally say, you know, we went through all the ups and downs together. You know, we shared some of the toughest moments in life, some of the best moments in life. And when I heard him, I was thinking like, no way. You know, because this guy, to be honest, he tends to exaggerate things. You know, I've, I've heard him share stories before. And you know, I've heard him exaggerate stories at times. So I was thinking maybe he's exaggerating this time as well. And then he said, you know, Josh, if you were in Korea, you'd be considered a cult leader because you reject penal substitution without getting all technical and stuff like that. I have a whole video on penal substitution, look it up. And then this guy went off on me for like a good 30 minutes, or at least it felt that way. And at one point I asked him, is this how you treat people who have beliefs different than yours? You know, is this how you would treat a Buddhist or a Muslim or an atheist? But the question that really got him to chill and to relax was when I asked him, are we only friends because of doctrine? Or do you really love me as a friend? And all of a sudden he got calm and quieted down because this guy was actually pretty aggressive over the phone. And I told my wife what happened and to be honest, like we were just shocked. Yeah, I mean, of course, mostly me because these were my friends. So of course I wanted to know if what I heard from this guy over the phone was true. So I actually went back to my alma mater. And if you guys know me, you know, when I used to live back in the States, my alma mater, the place where I graduated from was literally like my second home, I was always there. Because I was just really close to a lot of people there. I was close to the students, I was close to the professors and even some of the workers there. So one day I decided to go back there to my school to check it out. And thankfully I was able to find a friend and in the beginning, to be honest, I didn't bring it up. I didn't bring the issue up. So we spent like the afternoon together. But towards the end of the conversation, I finally brought it up. You know, I asked him, you know, is it true? I heard, I spoke to so-and-so and I heard that people are saying such and such. And then he grabbed my arm and he's like, we're praying for you, Josh. With this really concerned look on his face, as though I were lost. And then for the next couple of years, of, you know, because we were in the States for three years, I would hear about one friend after the other who decided to stay away from me because of my beliefs and even hearing about some of my professors being concerned about me. And it's crazy because I'd even see people on campus who would see me and then all of a sudden they'd look away and then just ignore me and just walk right past by me. I mean, these are folks who really looked up to me back in the day that I literally counseled and, and I would teach them and train them. And I was like, whoa, you know? But in a way I wasn't surprised because those people who I saw that would ignore me were actually being mentored by people who actually warn other people about false teachers and stuff like that. But it did hit me though, you know? So at one point I was like, oh man, I guess it's true. <laughs> For the most part, I got pretty thick skin. Just read my comments, man, on YouTube or on Facebook that people say about me or my videos. You know, people send me these long ass emails and messages, you know, threatening me that I'm going to hell or that I'm from the devil. And my wife can testify, thankfully, none of those things face me, like at all. Why? Because I understand the religious mindset. I understand that they're trying to be faithful to their version of God, their understanding of God, and their version of the Bible and how they interpret certain verses, you know, having to stay away from people. But when it came to seeing my closest friends, you know, start to distance themselves from me completely, yeah, of course it hurt. You know, I'm not gonna deny that. I remember one day when I was just chilling in the backyard at my parents' home, and I don't know if it was a weekend or whatever, but I was just chilling by myself, and then my dad comes out, and then he looks at me, and he's like, you have no more friends, huh? You know, and we just started laughing. Of course, it's like an exaggeration in a way. It's just that he noticed he didn't see the same people in my life like he used to. Because I used to chill with a lot of people back in the day. So I guess what surprised me the most wasn't the fact that my friends 
disagreed with me. That That's a given. I, I knew that coming back to America that my friends would disagree with me. But it was more so the fact that I thought that they'd at least be willing to meet up with me first. We could talk about it, agree to disagree, and then decide to stay away from me if that's what you feel that you need to do. You know what I'm saying? But at least hear me out first. But they didn't even want to meet up. Because of course throughout the years I'd run into some people here and there and they would tell me and say, you know, so-and-so is actually staying away from you. You know, because some of them even go to the same churches. Some of them are just staying away from you because of your beliefs. And to be honest, I had no clue that my friends were watching my videos while I was while we were living here in the Philippines. I thought that they were just too busy with ministry and that they had other things to do than to watch their friends' sermons in the Philippines or whatever. And I guess another thing that surprised me was that instead of connecting with certain individuals that I thought that I would be chilling with again, I started to uh, reconnect with some of my old friends, the guys that I actually grew up with, my childhood friends. These are people that I literally grew up with. They're not into theology. They don't really go to church. Our background back in the day was like hip hop and all that stuff. And it just didn't bother these people. So that was nice, you know, to get reconnected. I could share a lot of stories, man. It's freaking nuts. You know, I remember the time when I was in, when I first moved out here to the Philippines, I was still single. I remember when this one mega church pastor wanted to meet up with me. And so we met up one day and I was like, so why'd you want to meet up? And then he told me, that this one person who's actually a well-known rock star here in the Philippines he was like, oh yeah, she actually warned me about you and said some things about you that weren't good, pretty much and I was like, so why'd you decide to meet up with me? And then he said, because I wanted to know if it was true and it's not true and when I heard that, I was like, oh man you know, that actually means a lot to me that here's a person who heard people talk shit about me but yet here's this guy who's willing to take the time to find out for himself and not let other people do the thinking for him and just to go back to this whole thing, you know, and just for several years, uh, because some of my, my former closest friends couldn't accept a lot of the changes in my life. We were no longer invited to birthdays, to weddings, you name it. Just a lot of the precious moments that, that people can share in life. But here's the thing. No matter how much negativity we've received, no matter how many friends we've lost, we can honestly say this. We're okay. I'm okay. My wife is okay, I think. No, I'm joking, she's okay. You know, thankfully, I'm not bitter. Because honestly, folks, there's no reason to be bitter. It's just more of surprise. Because if people know me, they know that I'm the type that, I'm not the type that really holds grudges. I don't get offended easily. Especially when you do the kind of work that I do and put out the certain content that I put out there. You can't get offended easily when you do this kind of stuff. Life goes on, right? You know, because I, I still love them. Even to this day, I still love them. And it's crazy because I'm a, I'm a very vivid dreamer. Right, I have a lot of lucid dreams too. But throughout the years, I've had dreams of some of my former closest friends. And it's so interesting that in all of those dreams, I feel nothing but love for my friends. No anger, no grudges, no bitterness, nothing. And in several of the dreams, I even remember when I would see them, I would be in tears. And I would just look at my friends and just be like, what happened? You know, because I, I, just, I just miss them. So why am I sharing all this? Especially when it comes to religion because when you believe in an exclusive God and you want to be faithful to that version of God that you believe then guess what you'll be exclusive too which is why our beliefs about God about life about the Bible stinking matter so what about you okay you're obviously watching this video for a reason maybe you could relate to a lot of the things that I'm saying you probably had similar experiences that I have when it comes to losing a lot of relationships. Maybe you've lost some of your closest friends because you left the church or you've been questioning a lot and people weren't appreciating that. You know, so those people that you lost in your life, you know, so were they not your real friends? You know, because a lot of people say that, you know, they're not your real friends. Maybe. I mean, they probably seem like they were your real friends back then, right? Now, I'm not trying to be heartless here, right? Uh, but they're no longer your friends now. And that's something that you got to accept. And here's why. Because they're not willing to take the time to listen to you and to understand you in your heart. Why invest so much time and energy into trying to make a relationship happen when the other person ain't interested or doesn't feel the same way? I mean, relationships, they're a two-way street. You know, imagine someone only being your friend because you share the same faith or the same religion where they can't accept you for you. They can't appreciate you for you. Despite all your differences, you know, why try to keep those relationships 
together. Especially when you can't be true to yourself whenever you're around them. How silly is that, man? For real, that's, that's silly to me. You can miss them. You can revisit those good memories you had together. You can cherish them. But then you gotta stink in, move on. Thing is, folks, people change. We all change, some way more than others. So what are you gonna do? You know, are you just gonna be like, you could have a pity party for yourself and be depressed, whatever. But you eventually gotta reach a point where you move on. You see, folks, here's some good news. It's not the end of the world because there are countless people all over the world who are just like you, right? Who can identify and relate to your quote unquote spiritual journey and who are also longing for authentic relationships just like you and me, right? Okay, so you lost some friends and I'm sure you've heard this already, but you'll gain new ones. You'll gain new friends in surprising ways. You lose some, you gain some, but it's a new chapter in your life now. But if you're the type of person who asks a lot of questions, who doesn't follow the majority for the sake of being true to your convictions, but yet you're still in the church or your environment is like a religious community, or maybe your religious faith no longer makes sense to you and you're probably an outspoken person in some ways. Remember, you gotta have some thick skin, man. You gotta have some thick skin. You gotta learn how to handle rejection. You gotta learn how to handle people labeling you, calling you names, calling you crazy, demonizing you, condemning you to hell. But here's the thing, they just don't understand. But you can understand where they're coming from. A lot of us were there. We used to think the same way. So don't let it get to you, man. Don't let it get to you. I've seen it all. I've experienced a lot of things firsthand. And one day, people love you, right? And they're your friends and they promote you and do all these things. And the next day, boom, you are the enemy and they want nothing to do with you and you're labeled as dangerous just like that. It happens all the time. You know, have some variety in your life for goodness sake. You know, of course there are some beliefs that unite a lot of us that we can share in common. I don't deny that. But my point is this, don't be limited to a particular group or religious group. Appreciate other people's perspectives. People can say, but Josh, all my friends are gone. I met them all at church. What am I going to do? Get your ass out there. Learn how to make new friends, man. Learn how to talk to people. Get out of your comfort zone. Talk to people wherever you are in the store, when you're online. Join meetups or attend events because eventually you will meet people who are on a similar path as you. Maybe some of you are concerned because you have kids and you're like, I don't know what to do anymore. There are more kids out there besides the ones in children's church or in Sunday school. Have your kids join activities. They'll meet new friends there. Let them participate in sports or dancing or camps or summer camps. The thing is folks, there are plenty of people to meet and plenty of activities to attend if you just look for it if you just look for it be intentional but in another sense I actually think at times it's good to be alone for a while at least to some degree not not completely alone but just away from a lot of the noise to have time to yourself cherish those moments of being alone for a while don't just try to find yourself but create yourself create the path that you're willing to follow now that makes the most sense to you now Follow your heart, you know, learn to be secure without having to find your identity in any particular group or having to live up to other people's expectations of you. Be true to you. Figure out what you really want to do with your life. Back then I had such a big network of people that I was connected with, different friends and ministries, people promoting each other. Then as I began to question things more and more, then my circle of friends got smaller and smaller and I lost a lot of speaking opportunities, etc. But you know what? It's all good. You know what I'm saying? I just had, I had a roll with the punches and for you, whatever your situation is, you gotta roll with the punches and not be a crybaby about it. But to be straight up, I'd rather have a few close friends who really have my back instead of a bunch of fake friends who just bounce for stupid reasons. Now that's why I'm thankful for my wife, you know, having her in my life. Oh, that rhymed. I did not plan that. Because, you know, during those painful times, she was with me. And even just two months ago, right, when I put out that video that was shared a lot about why I'm no longer a Christian. The day before, I believe, that I made it public, you know, put it online. I was telling my wife, you know, is it okay I put this up? We might lose some more friends, right? And she was cool with it because my wife's always had my back. She was always there by my side. Because the thing is, when, when I take hits, she takes the hits too. And that's why we all need real people, true friends who could really stick by us and who really do care. All right, so here's a big question. Does being true to yourself and following the path that you feel led to follow worth losing friends? In other words, is it worth it? For me, 
Yes. Last week, my wife, she actually spent the night at her sibling's place because uh, her sister was going out of the country for a while, so they're just spending time together. In other words, I had our home to myself. And so that night, I remember just being home alone. As I was going to bed, I just decided to meditate and to just reflect on my life and, and the choices that I've made throughout the years. And I just literally broke down in tears, like hard. And it's not because I was sad or it's not because I was disappointed, but because I was so grateful for my life because I've never felt this liberated in my whole life, folks. And that's hard for some people to believe. I've never felt this free. You know, although this journey has been pretty challenging and, and sometimes painful and even lonely at times, I don't regret it. You know, because all the time when I meet people, they ask me, you know, how do I handle all the critics? How do I handle all the criticism from people and the hate mail? Because for me, it doesn't matter. Because I know what I'm experiencing now. Well, let me just say this, you know, to all our friends out there who have stuck by my wife and I, Remy and I, all these years, man. To those of you who have lost friends for being our friends, and you know who you are, you guys have told me you guys lost friends for being our friends. Thank you. You guys have been a source of strength and encouragement. When times got tough, when a lot of people misunderstood us, you guys understood us. You guys were there for us. We really love and appreciate you guys, and you know that because we tell it to your faces when we see you. And to all our friends on YouTube and on Facebook and online, you know what I'm saying, who have supported us throughout all these years, we love you guys too, and we can't wait to see you guys and meet face to face. Alrighty guys, I think that's it for now, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Share this video if you think it's gonna help a lot of people if it resonated with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up or a like on Facebook. Alrighty guys, I'm out. Peace.